Hey all, Ryan here. Uh, welcome to my channel, Ryan Ryan Guy. Uh, if you're new here, thank you for popping by. We are uh, going to be talking about some cross stitching today. Um, maybe a little bit of sewing. We've got some sashiko as well. And um, if you're returning, uh, thanks for coming back. I love having you here and I appreciate all of the love you guys sent my way on my last uh, floss tube which was about a month ago already. It was four weeks ago and it, it marked kind of my one year anniversary here in the world of YouTube. And uh, and, and I want to thank you for making this space uh, so special uh, to me and, and I hope that I can give some of that back to you. Um, um, again, thank you. Thank you for all the lovely comments. Um, I, I replied uh, to as many as I could and uh, and I really value them and I value your company and I appreciate having you here. And um, as, as I asked, I think uh, quite a few of you told me that you like to stitch as you're watching floss tubes. So if you want to take this moment to refresh your beverage, and get settled in. Um, I can tell you since since we last chatted, um, if if you follow me on Instagram, um, you uh, might have noticed it, noticed a post. Um, it was um, March break. It was spring break here not that long ago. Um, my partner Peter works for the school board here in Toronto, and uh, so they get a week off in in uh, March, and uh, a lot of people go south. Um, you know, I'm I'm not uh, that disappointed <laughs> to not fly anywhere. Uh, so we rented a cottage for a few days um, up um, north of the city in an area, um, Muskoka, uh, near Algonquin Park, and um, yeah, so it was a it was a beautiful, lovely winter getaway um, in a cabin. We had a box stove and with a with a window, a glass window on it, and um, it was a primary source of heat. So that was <laughs> that was really nice and cozy and. Of course, Stella, our dog, uh, absolutely was in heaven. She loved it so much. She, she didn't want to come inside. We had great weather. We went for a few walks, um, had a great butter tart at a local bakery up there. So it was, yeah, it was really nice to, to get out of the city and um, enjoy, do a little bit of earthing or foresting, uh, sort of grounding, uh, just to reconnect with, with nature. and. And to get away from all the light pollution, I mean, you you kind of take for granted um, the fact that you're surrounded by it all the time, and then suddenly when you're not, it was like, wow, you know, you can you can see the stars. It's incredible. So, anyway, that's that's uh, one of the things I did while um, while I was uh, since since my last recording. Um, I've also done a lot of stitching. Um, we, we've got a lot of ground to cover here. Uh, I think um, what I'll do is I will start... I made my list here as usual. I've got my little library cards with all my projects on it. Um, we'll start with some ones that you probably saw if you tuned into my last, uh, my last floss tube. Um, these will definitely look familiar to you because um, they were, I guess, new starts or works in progress then. And um, now the first one we're going to have a look at is um, a thimble purse. This this was a um, little chart um, sent to me, sort of past the stash from uh, Andrea way out in Australia, down in Australia. You know, I'm going to get reflection on that. So th this is my working copy, which which, you know, honestly, I take a look at the do side by side and my printer is not doing too bad a job at capturing, capturing the colors. Uh, so, so this is my working copy. And um, it's a uh, Brenda Gervais uh, thimble purse um, and it's called Quaker Sampler. Uh, Andrea also sent me uh, another one as well. Um, I had to source the hardware myself and, and I found it on, um, on AliExpress. You can also find it on Amazon. A lot of people ask me 
um, for that information. So I'll, I'll go ahead and share a link um, in the drop down box below so so you can have a look. Um, if, if a purse, a thimble purse is something you're interested in, in putting together. Now I don't know what the demand is for thimble purses these days, but um, um, but there it is. I saw it and I wanted to make it and Andrea was kind enough to send me the pattern. So thank you, Andrea. Uh, did I finish stitching the last time I was with you? Uh, I, I think I did and I just had to do the final finish on it. So <laughs> here it is. Uh, da, 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 da. So are we in focus? So what I did, honestly, I, I wasn't that happy with it. The, the shape, first of all, of um, the, the closure is a little bit different than, than what the chart had called for. So I think the chart actually was, um, had included the hardware. So the, the shape itself was a little bit different and um, they provided a, a pattern to follow. So what did I did, I did a little mock-up and um, I found it, it just, it just didn't work for the shape of this and um, for the shape of the design too. In fact, I, I noticed on hers, sorry, I keep going back to this. I, I don't know if you can tell, but there should be an alphabet there, um, A, B, a, B, C, D, E, F. You can see in mine on the top. And for hers, she's missing the A, first of all, is, is totally caught underneath the closure and there's no D or E. So I'm, I'm glad I took the time to do a mock-up so I could redraft a pattern and ensure that everything sort of fit on um, onto the little purse here. And I, I just used um, a silk um, lining. It was a satin, um, a duchess satin, leftover actually from, from a wedding dress that, that I had made um, quite a few years ago. And uh, I, it, it's perfect for, for a lining for a purse. So I'm happy with, with the way that turned out. The construction itself wasn't that complicated. However, I just found it kind of wonky. I don't know if you can tell, like it doesn't, it doesn't sit even. Um, it's, uh, you, you know, it, it, it just, it just felt a little, I don't know, it, it just wasn't good enough for me. And I actually was making this as, a, as a, for the Smalls Exchange at the upcoming uh, Stitch North retreat. Um, I'm attending the one end of April. And so this is going to be my Smalls Exchange. And um, so, you know, I, I stitched <laughs> Stitch North 2023 on the back. And you can see it's just, it's kind of wonky. Do you, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I'm like, are, are people gonna wanna receive this? I, I mean, it, it just looks kind of weird. But, you know, I, I, I went back to the to the source here and I'm looking, I'm looking at, at her model. And you know what? It's also a little wonky, right? So I don't think, Mine is, oh, where am I going? <laughs> what am I doing? I don't think mine is that far off. So, uh, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, I think that this is going to work for, for a smalls exchange. I just need to figure out what to hang, um, what to hang it from. I think she, she called for waxed cotton um, cord or a thread. Um, I, I tried using some ribbon and, uh, it, you know, it just wasn't, you know, it's wider than a cord, but I think it needed something darker. So, um, you know, that's pending. Um, I used, what did I, oh, I used my, um, my own conversion, um, for the colors. And, uh, I think that was the only change I made is, is I just used my own colors for it. And of course, on the back, I added the Stitch North. So this is my fully finished object. 
or final finish object. I know last last time I was referring it to final finish. Uh, so I think the FFO is fully finished object. So here's my fully finished object, Thimble Purse, Brenda Gervais. So if you are coming to Stitch North um, in April and you are participating in the Smalls Exchange, um, this might be part of a little package from me. So. better like it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Too bad it's not like one of those, was it like those round robin-y kind of gift exchanges where you keep passing gifts back and forth. Um, if you don't like it, you can trade with someone else who's already opened theirs. I, I mean, that would be fun or maybe not fair. I don't know. Anyway, that was my thimble purse. Oh, the, the fabric, if you want to know, I did a 40 count antique country mocha by Zweigart. And again, the floss was a conversion. Um, next on the docket is, I, I talked about this last time. Um, it's an ink circles design, and it was actually um, part of a round robin that I'm participating in. Um, there are teams of four people and um, every team um, will pass around an ink circles Mandela type design and stitch on one quarter of it. And they'll have three months to stitch their quarter and then mail it on. And then they'll receive um, a, a, pad a chart from someone on the other side. And uh, so at the end of the year, um, all four quarters will have been worked on by four different people and you'll end up back with your um, finished object. So the, the one I chose, I'm actually in a team of four people. We are all stitching the same thing. It was a popular choice. It's uh, ink circles, circular logic, and um, for the colors that I chose, I, I sort of followed uh, Tracy's model here and then I picked a kind of a variegated floss for the more complicated designs and for the overriding circles, I picked a solid color. So did I? Oh yeah, here they are. So I chose a Dinky Dyes. And I chose which one here? I chose a, a Cosmo floss. And um, thanks to your help on Instagram, the world of Instagram, I asked for your input. I, I gave you two options and you helped me uh, select uh, the darker one. I mean, it's looking fairly light here, but I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. Uh, so let's, let's, let's go to the linen. This is my quarter. So this is f finished for me <laughs> and um, I will be sending it on um, and on <laughs> uh, to my fellow stitcher to continue working around the mandala. So I'm, I'm really delighted with how the effect is with the variegation and then with that solid, that darker turquoise, I think really works well here. Um, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm happy that I'm done my, my quarter. And, and the funny thing is, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, I've, it's a sense of relief. I'm done. But uh, I'm going to have three more versions <laughs> coming back to me. Um, I'm really curious to see what they're looking like um, because uh, we haven't, um, I don't think we've shared too many images back and forth. So I, I'm really curious to see what everyone else is, is going to look like. So circular logic ink circles um the fabric is uh color and cotton it's 36 count peppercorn um a dinky dye silk is the variegated floss and cosmo is um is the solid blue so yeah i i, I think that'll be um that'll that'll look really nice and i think this might be one of the few pieces that i'll actually end up framing so, you know, if you've been around for a while, you'll know I'm, I'm often about a finish or a smalls finish or, you know, I've even turned some into project bags. So 
So I think this will be a nice, a nice piece that I can frame. What's next, people? Yes. Yeah, this one I shared with you last time as well. And it is, here, let me pull out my working copy. By Shaded Stitchery. And it is called uh, Black Butterfly Sampler. She did stitchery. I think the last time um, I shared it, I had just this butterfly done. And uh, I chose three shades of black. And, uh, and I think that they'll be too subtle to really see any sort of distinction. Um, they're all Roxy, Flosco, Licorice all sorts vamp and chalkboard um well here i'll just hold it up so those are the those are the flosses yeah they're black um I'll, I'll fill you in on another floss that i was trying to work with here well you'll see it in immediate this is where i am right now why am i having a hard time getting this centered so the the linen is a 36 count exceptional by um, Fortnite Fabrics. And um, again, this is Roxy Floss Co. Uh, I, I tried, you can see here, I, I started working on one of the borders and that was in Vamp, which is different than the butterfly colors. Honestly, you can't tell. I can't tell. Um, you might be able to know that it's different. Um, but it's so subtle. I'm like, mm, you know, maybe I'll, I'll try to go bolder in a different color. And that's when I was experimenting. You'll see with the, with the P, I started stitching the alphabet in a different, there we go, different floss altogether. And this was courtesy of, um, skipped threads. I, last year I picked up some floss from her I, I can't unfortunately i can't remember what it was called but it was really dark and it had these beautiful flecks of color um is, it, is that are you able to see that at all oh yeah so i thought that that might be an interesting color to to try to incorporate into this particular design and unfortunately um i i think that it's got a little too much white if, if you can see that to me it for my taste it's it's got a little too much of the pale areas or they're a bit too much of a high contrast with with the darker colors so i thought you know it, and it is just such a pretty floss you know and and so i was asking my friends you know is it possible to like maybe take a sharpie and kind of adjust or tone down the lighter parts um I, you know, I can always experiment with that and see if that makes a difference. Uh, I would just be afraid kind of what happens to the linen, um, if, if it'll bleed at all or transfer or how stable it is as a, as a pigment, if it's just going to fade immediately. I, I, I really never worked with Sharpies on floss before. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, that was kind of like my, my failed experiment. So I'll, I'll just pluck out that. P. I'll get rid of the P and um, just continue with the blacks. If I've got something else in my stash that I can use, um, then I will then I will make that happen. Um, but until then, I still have a few butterflies, some flowers and the border to work on. So did I go over everything with that? I think so. So that's work in progress. Uh, my next thing, I think I showed you, I think I showed you last time, but I hadn't started it. Um, so now I, I have started it. I've worked on it. And it's one of those designs where, you know, once you start working on it, you, you can't stop, which, which is, in, in my mind, it's a, it's a sign of a great design. 
And uh, here's another ink circles. Um, I think this is definitely going to be an ink circles year. It's uh, the name of the chart. The design is called. Up, up, up. Garden of Zig. And uh, it uses some beautiful tonal flosses from um, country. Here, I'll, I'll just show them to you. Country, I'm oh, sorry, I always say country, cottage garden threads. And um, so I bought the floss pack. And uh, so I'm using all the call, called for colors. And just look how beautiful those are. Uh, what I did, I, I took a picture for Instagram, and they, they come um, sort of twisted up on these on these cards. And uh, so when you use them, you keep them in the little card holder, and you just pull out one strand at a time. Um, but because they were twisted, um, they're a little kinky. kinky. <laughs> so I, I just took a steam um, with my iron here, and they, they turned out beautifully. And you can really see... I think in the in the purple especially in the purple especially you can really see the colors the the tonal the tonal shading that's happening and the awesome thing yes this is a sales pitch not sponsored <laughs> um, for cottage garden threads but the, the the amazing thing about these flosses is like if you notice where the, the shading is, how it goes from light to dark, um, they're all pre-cut lengths. So you can pull any strand from any point in this bundle and you are assured to have um, the beginning and the end of your strand and in the same value color. And um, so when you're stitching, you don't need to worry about matching up if that's important for you or to continue shading. Um, and also knowing the predictability of it kind of allows you to control how that shading happens a little more. So, and I love that, like that's, that's right up my alley. So one, two, three, four, just five, five flosses. And I think there's five flosses. So this is, this is where I am. This is why we're here, right? This is where I am. I think it's a little more green in in real life. Um, oh, that's there you go. That's more of a true representation of the colors. Uh, yeah, I just I just love what the purple is doing. I love what the green is doing. I love what the red is doing, uh, and I just couldn't stop. It's one of those where, you know, you you have a length of, you have a, a pulled strand and you're stitching, and then you come to the end of the design, and it's like, well, I still have floss left, so you jump to another area and, and use it up, and then oh, but I started that flower, so I need to add the stem. So yeah, it, it was it was really um, a, a great chart to work with and if you'll notice this is my plan here um, if you'll notice this is kind of like the border is it sort of bisects the design and there are flowers above and below and so you know in my brilliance and in my effort to make my life as complicated as possible um, I was debating and and entertaining the notion that maybe I could use this bottom band like have this band as the bot have this band as um, the bottom border of, of um, a pin drum so I can have the flowers around the top part and have this band going across the bottom and I can continue it and I can move these flowers up so it would be extra long with this extra long border and um, I've never made a pin drum before but I thought you know what I, I can at least I can at least stitch I can at least stitch the width of the design and see how big it is and if that makes any sense at all um, so I'll, I'll have that a go as well <laughs> now what else do I have to... Oh, the linen. Um, did I say what it was? Exceptional? 
Yeah. I think I did. Oh, no, no. Exceptional was the the, the black butterfly. Uh, this is seraphim. Um, the linen is seraphim. It's 40 count. And if it looks familiar, um, that's because it is. <laughs> uh, this is where I had my mantis life. And uh, I love this linen so much. It was my first time working on seraphim. And 40 count is a really nice, comfortable count. Um, it's got a nice, dense structure, but it's still soft and drapey. Um, uh, it, it, the fibers really don't split when you um, needle through the holes. So seraphim, great job. I, I hope uh, to see more of your linens in my future. Cottage garden threads. I hope to see more of your threads in my future. Um, I, I yeah, I great floss. Whew, let's pause for a beverage break. How are we doing? Oh yes, uh, this I didn't show. I don't think I showed, maybe I talked about it under plans or something, but um, anyway, this, this I'm making is a gift for someone and that someone's name is Ellen. Ellen, if you're watching and you want to be surprised, um, I want you to skip forward <laughs> um, to a point where I'm no longer talking about this. So what I'll do is I'll put, um, when I'm editing this, I'll, I'll put the timestamp um, here, up here, uh, for when you can jump ahead and uh, join us again. So press pause, go forward, and we'll see you in the future. To all of um, you others out there, uh, the design, oh, I didn't bring the book. I didn't bring the book. Um, it's a it's a chart from a collection of designs of smalls, and um, it's called a heart a heart remembers. It's a booklet from Blackbird Designs, and the the design that I chose to stitch for, and the reason I'm stitching this for Ellen is because she was kind enough to gift the the book and um, some linen and the and the flosses to me. Now I'm not stitching it on the linen that I got. Um, you'll, you'll see in a minute, but this is what I'm stitching. It's called, does it have a name there? My Dear Friend. This is called My Dear Friend. It's not that large. It's a cute little heart. I liked the motif. I think she liked the motif too, which is I think why, why I picked it. And what I love about this is the linen that I chose. I, I, I used all the called for flosses that that did not change. So it was a mix of different of uh, different company flosses. Um, really nice palette. Um, but what what I did do, I didn't stitch it on the sort of a, a creamy oatmeal. I stitched it on um, I stitched it on this gorgeous Cedar River. It's called a red cedar in 36 count. And uh, just have a look at this. This is as far as I got, which in my mind is pretty good. I'm, I'm not complaining at all. And uh, do you want to go closer? There's a little bird and flowers, a little sort of urn vase. Um, the, the, original, the original pattern has a, has an initial B right here. <laughs> has an initial B. And uh, so it was a real easy transition to make it into an E. <laughs> uh, but I, I just love the way that the, the rose here in the center is a near identical match to the actual linen and the fact that it's all surrounded by this um, parchment colored floss uh, really helps uh, make it stand out and um, yeah I, I it, this is actually a little bit bigger than I thought it might be um, 
but uh, but once I sew it up, it, it'll be perfect. And I, I kind of stopped, not because I was bored or because I had other things I, I wanted to work on, but because I, I want to put some text there, like the original. Um, it says here, to my... To my... <laughs> <laughs> there we go um to my dear friend 2021 and yes ellen is a dear friend of mine we we go back many 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 years many and um and she is a dear friend of mine uh the year is no longer 2021 is 2023 and uh so i want to put something a little quirky or whimsical um i i know that she has a collection of angsty birds and there is a bird in here i don't know how angsty this little bird looks i don't know if i have a lot of room to put some sort of angsty quote but uh so keep an eye out for that in the very near future um i, I hope to have this finished by the next time that i film um i don't know if i'll have it fully finished but um i'll certainly do my best to at least figure out what it is i'm gonna say and and get the, that stitching down it, it stitched up really quickly so um so that made me happy now, Ellen, are you back? Are you even watching this? Please come back. <laughs> so that is by uh, how are we doing? Oh, okay. So if you remember um, my very first project, I talked about the purse. I said I, I wasn't that happy with it and um, I wasn't sure if I would use it as a as a giveaway um, for the for the smalls exchange. And so in addition to that thinking, um, it was also right before us going away to the to the cabin up north. So I wanted to take a project with me and sort of like a an all-in-one kit that I didn't have to worry about and and I had one from from the cross stitch guild actually it's a 32 count just a natural linen it came with the floss it came with a needle it came with a chart um, and it was a small so it 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 really was kind of ticked all the boxes and um, so this is my working copy. Uh, it's called a just a folded <laughs> folded project pocket um, by uh, Jane Greenoff, and uh, I think she might be the, f the founder of or the lead anyway, at least of the Cross Stitch Guild in the UK. So um, I thought this is this is really sweet. It has the four-sided stitch. It has a um, hem finish, um, the hem stitching finish, which I've wanted to try. And um, it's, a, it's a nice little sort of pocket that you can put some scissors. There's some hand-dyed felt you can use um, to hold your pins. And I, I thought, that, and, and this was in, inspired by or taken from um, bands from, from historical samplers, I'm assuming, in, in her collection. So I thought that was nice. Again, 32 count, really easy to manage. Um, the, 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 this is the floss. Oh, there's the cross stitch guild. Um, these are the carded flosses that came. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really pretty palette. There's, you know, the, uh, I was really curious to know how they would be using these colors in combination because um, there's a few pretty pretty bold ones and um, so I'll take you on a little journey of my stitching um, thought process as I as I went through this let me see if so just you can share in the experience that I went through as well so I started with I started with one band I started in the center and um, And that's that's what I did and um, yeah green and gold I thought that was that was really nice and uh, and then I did another band sort of like almost like little blue beans <laughs> 
and then I did another band and I'm like oh that's that's a little bold that's kind of interesting with the colors um it, it kind of reminded me of sort of a you know varsity letterman team um you know sort of that that intense purple and the yellowy gold um so i'm like okay okay well that's that, that's getting pretty bold um and then oh there's another row, row of beans <laughs> and then and then this happened And I'm like, mm, no, 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 no. This, this, this is definitely not working for me. This, this is actually rather a hideous combination, <laughs> just to, to put it subtly. And uh, as a whole, you know, it was stretching it a bit. I'm like, I cannot, uh, I cannot, in my right mind, continue with the colors the way that they are. So that's where I stopped. I put it aside. I was again. I was at, at the cabin, and um, and then I thought, you know, when when I came back home, um, the the chart. I remember the chart used two different kinds of floss. There was a a Madeira. I'm not sure how I should be saying it. M A D E I R A Madeira, um, and DMC. So each symbol had a number um, for each of those two floss companies. And m the majority of them I could see were DMC and a couple of them were Madeira. And so my suspicion is, so when I came back home, I compared all of the colors, in particular, this red 512, <laughs> um, because that, that really seemed to be the culprit in here like it just it really had no business being there so uh, I, I looked at all the comparisons and the conversions and sure enough it's not identical this this is here I should have prepared this ahead of time this is the red that was provided in the kit and it's a Madeira floss, and this is the equivalent that they're calling for in DMC. Does that look the same to you? No. No. No, it's not. So I'm like, okay, well, let's let's give this a try. So, um, so I continued up, <laughs> and uh, and then I used. I used the DMC red and I'm like, you know what? This this is not bad. This this I can actually live with. And so I, I continued and I continued and I continued. And um, and this is as far as I got. So will I will I finish this? Yes, I, I will continue it. Will I continue it with this red? Absolutely. Is this red coming out? Most definitely um, that this cannot stay and um, I think this is maybe represents just over half of what needs to be stitched um, so there's a little bit more up here and there's a little more down here um, I've already put in the four-sided stitches which I really like by the way and I have to say the the instructions were to stitch all of the four-sided stitches at the end. Um, so after you finished your cross stitch. And I'm like, well, okay, but... So I was saving them. And then I said, you know, again, because I this, this design just wasn't sitting well with me. I said, well, let's put a row in and let's put another row in. And you know, it, it came together, it came together a little more. And um, however, <laughs> My, my point in mentioning this is if, you, if you're doing sort of an open work um, or, or where you're pulling the thread to create these open holes, I don't know how well you can see that. Oh, that's not so bad. You can see the four-sided stitch is creating these little holes. So I'm pulling quite hard on the floss here. And because I was doing four-sided stitch with cross-stitch, when you go 
back to cross stitch, your muscle memory is you're still yanking that floss. Not a good idea. <laughs> Not a good idea. So I guess I don't have the, the practice or the mindset to, to be able to alternate or for my, my muscles in my hands to be smart enough to differentiate between, oh, we're doing four-sided, oh, we're doing a cross stitch. So anyway, that was just a funny and stupid little anecdote about four-sided stitches and following directions. So, and color conversion. That, that, that really was an eye-opener. So, uh, yeah, no wonder. I, I'm glad it wasn't just me in that. Um, I mean, it might be just me, but I'm, I'm glad that it, it, I'm glad that that color wasn't necessarily supposed to be the color. I think that they made a mistake um, because there's no way that that one can convert to the other. They're, they're, they're just far too different. Right? Right. Uh, is that all I have to say about that? 32 count natural um, DMC Madeira floss. Yeah. Oh, so that, yeah. So that would that would have been my backup for the smalls exchange. Um, I'll still go ahead and finish it because I do want to have something to practice that hem stitch on. And um, I, I actually do have a pod of of that those walnut crystals. Look. Let me just show this off to you again. Um, I do have a pot of the walnut crystals, and I think because the colors are so are so bold here, um, I wonder if maybe putting a wash with the walnut crystals just to sort of even everything out, muddy things up a little bit, um, sort of distress it a little, might help give it more of an antique vibe. Um, rather than everything being so bold and saturated. So stay tuned for that experiment, right? Always always exploring new things. How are we doing? Oh yes. So um, if from last time I was I was talking about uh, sashiko, which is a, a Japanese style of needlework. Um, and it started as a as a method of darning um, many 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 centuries ago, and uh, it's getting I think a bit of a resurgence. And I was able to find um, a kit, and uh, I showed you. Um, oh, I, I hadn't finished it the last time here, but I've finished it now. So this <laughs> this is it. It's a dishcloth, so it's two layers of kind of a cotton linen blend, and it's a 100% cotton um, thread, and uh, it's much thicker than a DMC embroidery floss. It's almost like the pearl cotton, and um, and I, I love the fact that this is sort of, a, I think, a mountain range design, and I love the fact that it's so busy that it's almost hard to discern what this actually is. It just looks like a bunch of little dots, white, white, almost like grains of rice on here. And um, this, this was just such a joy to stitch on. Like I said, easy to pick up, easy to put down. Um, the, the pattern was printed right on here and it's water soluble. So it just washes off when you're done. And uh, I love the feel of it, and uh, I was I was so happy with how this turned out that um, that I got another kit. Yes, I did. Oh, oh, so so that eats up a lot of thread. That eats up a lot of floss, and I, I just want to show you talking about playing floss chick floss chicken. Chicken floss. I can't remember the expression. You know, you, you you try to hope that your floss doesn't run out before your stitching does. So the, this is what I had left for that for that navy and, and uh, white project. So barely anything. And I think that because this is getting popular in a, a more popular craft now, it's really hard to find. Um, just the, the the staples, the standard colors, and this is almost impossible to find. So I'm like, please, please, please don't let me run out. So I did not. 
My next one is the Sashiko sampler. It's the same thing again, uh, same kit, same company. Um, this is a, a series of concentric circles. You can see, or not concentric, they're um, overlapping circles. And they form this sort of elaborate design. And uh, I did a little bit different this time. Oh, here you can see the printing. Um, this is where I am right now. So you can see the printing. Um, I'm using this really cool color floss. And uh, oh, here you can see the needle. <laughs> it's massive. <laughs> It's, uh, it's quite large. It's very sharp. Um, I was, I can't cross stitch in a car uh, as a passenger, um, but I can do a sashiko, but not on the bumpy roads because th this is actually quite a weapon. Uh, what did I want to show you? Oh, it's the same Cosmo um, cotton cord. And uh, isn't that a pretty color? It's sort of a almost like a hot raspberry. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a, a, of a really bright hot raspberry. And um, I, I, you know, just uh, the one strand on, on the white, it has a really nice effect. So again, I, I love having these sort of little projects that you can keep in the back of your pocket metaphorically and um, they're, it's just so portable really uh, that uh, there are no brainers to, to have tucked away and you can just pop in and do them anytime. So that's my Sashiko experiment. Um, we have, oh, this is a little bit of stitchy kindness from my friend. I, I haven't spoken about him in a while. Uh, he travels a lot for work and I was just digging through my stuff and, and I found these that he sent me. Um, it's from a company called Sostren Green. I'm 100% sure I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, it's a Danish company and uh, I think it's a little bit like um, not Hema, <sighs> Tiger, Flying Tiger, oh, darn it, sorry for my memory, but um, it, it, they sell an odd collection of all kinds of things across all different sort of product lines, and, um, and their inventory changes quite frequently, uh, they'll have different themes, and so when he was visiting, one of the themes was sort of handicrafts, so he picked up these labels for me, made with love. <laughs> I need, I need labels that say, I almost died making this for you. The book is that, <laughs> that, that I think is far more apt. Um, and, uh, and also these really clever spools or bobbins of embroidery thread. And, uh, if you know me, I love, I love my spirograph. I absolutely love, um, playing with spirograph, anything to do with spirograph. And these, to me, very much have that feel, that vibe, sort of that inspiration. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a really clever way to bobinate your floss. I've seen um, other companies that sell something similar to that. I, I don't know what I'll use these colors for, but uh, I just thought that they were just so pretty. Uh, and... Okay, so that was, that was um, Stitchy Kindness. Uh, we have a bit of acquisition. <sighs> Am I running out of time? I've got a lot of stories today. Um, if you know Michelle G, Michelle Bendy of uh, Bendy Stitchy Designs, um, I, I, I watch her, I watch her, um, floss tube and follow her on Instagram and she shared some needle minders that a friend of hers made um, I believe his name is Josh I believe he's in Alabama and so when he launched his store um, in November I think it was November I, I was really keen to hop on the bandwagon and, and purchase some of the needle minders um, from the but anyway, uh, on Instagram, he um, but he popped it in the mail and I got it 
<laughs> so uh, Uncanny Uncanny Crafts is the name of his website. I'll, I'll post the link below. And um, because the experience of the order process was, was just such a disaster, uh, we called it a dumpster fire. So look what he made me. <laughs> This is a dumpster fire. Uh, these are these are all uh, 3D printed, and he uses uh, color in his 3D printing. And I'm not that familiar with the process with color, but uh, I, I think that they turned out really, really well. And I have to say, I need to find out what magnet he's using because um, these are, I mean, they feel very secure, very strong, but when I open the package, um, you know, in, in the kitchen when they arrived, they actually stuck to the countertop. And I don't have a metal countertop. It, it's a, you know, one of those composite. Um, so clearly there are other compounds or, or inorganic materials in it that, um, that uh, are affected with magnets. But th this was the first thing that ever stuck to the countertop. So kudos to you, Josh, for using an amazing magnet. Now, what did I actually order? I ordered, here we go. Let's see them all at once. We've got um, wasabi, we've got soy sauce, we've got uh, on, onigiri, I think. Is that oni, onigiri? Um, it's those triangular sort of rice bundles um, that have the seaweed um, wrapper, you know, that you can snack on. Um, I, I love them. <laughs> they're, they're quite delicious. And then there's a boba tea. There's our, our little bubble tea. And uh, the, first, the first bubble tea I ever had many, many years ago, when it first came to Toronto, um, my first bubble tea was a taro, taro bubble tea. And it was purple. A taro root is is purple, so I I had to get a purple bubble tea. So thank you, Josh, for sending the replacements. Uh, darn you, Canada Post for really dropping the ball right at the goal. Like really, that that was just so discouraging. And um, you know this this Christmas time, I had a few issues with Canada Post that it's left a really bad taste in my mouth. Um, so the next time someone says, oh, you know, would you recommend, you know, how, how would things get shipped to you? Um, I hesitate with Canada Post now. I mean, my alternatives are essentially zero. So, so I just, you know, hope that uh, whatever gets shipped to me gets shipped. Although this is the year of austerity. So... So we're not going to have a lot of packages uh, coming my way. How are we doing? Giveaway. Giveaway time. Um, I said I will be giving away a cross-stitch chart of um, design by my friend Ellen from Maximum Cross-Stitch. This is her beautiful, stunning friendship sampler. I am slowly working at um, getting it kitted up, and uh, it's awesome. It's 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 really awesome. It's highly customizable. Um, you know, she gives you lots of uh, alternatives if you don't want to stitch over one or um, to stitch different people, um, just to make it yours and make it unique. Um, you know, I'm, I'm slowly kitting it up with the with the different colors. Um, so far, I've been lucky. I've had most of these in my own stash. Uh, so that's awesome. And um, I'm filming this right now before I actually had a chance to use the random comment picker. So what I'll do after I record this and I'm editing it, I'll do the random comment picker and I will insert, where do we go? We usually go here, right? I'll insert the winner here, the recipient here, and um, it will be PDF. And um, I'll leave a 
reply to your original comment and we'll make arrangements about getting that uh, sent off to you. So thank you for everyone who expressed an interest in this. I know a lot of people um, out there have been stitching it already. There's some, um, there's some hashtags um, for different stitch alongs um, people are running and uh, I'll include them in the drop down box below if you'd like to join any of them. So uh, thank you Ellen again for providing an amazing design. Um, she's got a bunch more coming out and I'm telling you it, it's out of control. They're absolutely so beautiful. <sighs> If you watched me last time, I, if you watched me last, I think that's how I start every segment here, right? If you watched me last time, I shared with you um, design that uh, I worked on it was called Womp Womp, and um, what was I going to say about this? Uh, I, I wanted to turn this into a into a fully finished object for um, as a gift for a friend. And I had some fabric picked out. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. Uh, in in since I recorded that, I was experimenting a little bit with some some form factors. And one thing I wanted to make was a fabric basket. So I found an amazing tutorial online. I apologize, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Uh, Rosie, maybe it's Rosie, Rosie something something. Um, but I'll, I'll include her her details in the drop down box below and a link to her, her tutorial because it really is absolutely amazing. So simple to follow. Um, and she actually created these, um, a larger version obviously to store her linen. Um, but uh, I wanted to give it a go and um, because it uses that uh, special bottom construction technique I talked about before. And um, I thought, yeah, something like this is great to have um, if you're stitching, you know, around the house. And I know for me, I uh, I like somewhere to, to have my glasses, to have uh, scissors, um, your orts, whatever. It is just easy to, to to sort of corral all of your all of your stitchy goodies in. And um, what I liked about this too is it folds flat. <laughs> Isn't that clever? So pops open, folds flat. And in theory, I mean, I've not tested this yet, but let's <gasps> test it now. So they're supposed to be reversible. Yeah. Well, how about that? Well, Thank you for, thank you for indulging me here. <laughs> that's, that's not so bad. No, that's not so bad at all. Yeah, that turned out really well. Same thing. So, so yeah, it's, it's a great construction. No visible, um, like no raw edges or anything. And um, really easy really easy to sew. So I think that I will end up making something like this um, where I can incorporate this um, into it as well. So, you know, maybe one of the, maybe one of the panels um, I, I think will be nice. So, and I just love the fact that it can fold flat so you can toss it in your project bag and it's with you whenever you need it. That's my sewing. Um, what else do we have to talk about? We talked about the needle minders. Oh yes, um, I wanted to give a shout out to um, to Marie um, and to Angie, um, Stitches and Diamonds and um, Tiny House Stitcher. I'll include their their links below. Um, the two of them order uh, organize. Um, a virtual monthly stitching event called um, Stitch Across the Pond. And uh, yeah, it's a group of, I think, between 25 to 50 people uh, who get together virtually over Zoom and hang out and stitch. And I was able to participate in, I think, 
maybe two and a half or three and a half of them. <laughs> and, uh, and they're so much fun and they're so nice. And it's great to see what everyone else is working on. Um, it, it's great for people who don't have friends nearby who stitch. Um, it's great for people who have a uh, difficult time um, accessing a retreat. And uh, so I advise you if that's something that interests you. Um, I know a lot of people were a little bit nervous or shy about appearing on Zoom. Guys, don't worry about it. It's fine. Honestly, nobody cares. <laughs> we're, we're all in the same boat. And uh, it really is a blast. So so thank you, Marie and Angie, for taking the, the time and the effort and the energy to organize um, that kind of virtual monthly event. And... Um, I know that there is a sign-up process to follow because there there is a limited number of spots available. Um, there there's no charge, uh, which is amazing. And um, and uh, yeah, I always I always um, meet someone new or see a design that I'd love to add to my own portfolio. So um, I invite you to check them out in the drop-down box below. Uh, one more thing, uh, it is my birthday coming up in a couple of weeks and um, my mom usually um, plans a trip around that time. So, fingers crossed, I am going to see, mom, I don't know if you're listening or watching this, but um, I hope I can record a little segment with you <laughs> and um, just us chatting, a sort of a stitch along, uh, just a little hangout. And I think that would be a great birthday present that you could give to me would be your time and uh, your participation in this kind of activity. So what do you think, guys? You think she might be up for it? So, <laughs> uh, yeah, she'll, she'll probably be nervous, but I do have some some darning um, chores for her. <laughs> so uh, maybe that'll that'll be her craft activity while we're having a little chat. So. Anyway, uh, maybe keep a uh, keep an eye on uh, keep keep a lookout for that. And um, but after that, I mean, yeah. So she's coming middle of April, and then two weeks after, we have the Stitch North retreat again. So, yeah, it's like spring is happening. Things are happening. Um, yeah, lots is going on. So lots to look forward to. So I hope uh, I hope you have some fun plans to look forward to as well. And. Uh, if all goes well, maybe we'll have a chat in a couple of weeks um, back around my birthday, uh, whether it's a stitch along just with me, whether it's a stitch along with my mom, however it may look, um, something to keep an eye out for. So until then, uh, take care, be well, look after each other, and um, big hugs. See you next time. <laughs>